So I grew up in northeastern Ohio. I was always the young, rambunctious one, being the youngest of, of six kids. But uh, I was the adventurous one, too. So I'm one that moved away from home as soon as I turned 18. In my young adult life, we did a lot of canoeing and kayaking and snowboarding and skiing and fly fishing. The outdoors actually means a lot to me, and I think there's always this achievement and relaxation that you have when you're on the top of a mountain looking out. On that Friday was Friday, March 13th, 1998. I was 26 years old. I was out snowboarding with a bunch of friends. And it just happened to be a full moon that evening. If you ever ski at night during a full moon, the, the trails are beautiful. They just glow. Everybody made it down to the bottom of the mountain except for me. On the way down, I hit a patch of ice and went down a 40-foot embankment and ended up with a spinal cord injury. And from that point, I became a quadriplegic. And when that happens, your life just stops. And I had to build my life all over again and pick up the pieces and put them back together again. So Jen, how did you get from that accident to where you are now? I mean, what was that interim like? That journey was um, actually a, a, a quite profound because when, you, when you're spinal cord injured, what so many of us do is we try to find a solution. And when I finally came to the realization that I'm going to be paralyzed and I have this thing called a spinal cord injury, I had two drivers. One is that I wanted to combat all these secondary conditions, these life-threatening secondary conditions that happen to people with spinal cord injuries like kidney failure and um, osteoporosis and... Uh, pressure sores that can die from infections. So I was driving to be able to keep my body healthy, but also that its second driver was to keep my body healthy so I'm ready for when that cure comes for spinal cord injury. So that last uh, image you saw of me on an FES bike, I started to use FES cycling, which is basically putting electrodes on the surface of the skin and allowing somebody to pedal a uh, stationary bicycle. Um, and in the process, I was uh, appealing my insurance company and researching uh, for that appeal, and I came across the Cleveland FES Center and, and Hunter's research team. And uh, from there, they said, well, here's the research, and we're also doing these clinical trials as well. Are you interested? And from there, um, I joined on and decided to be one of the test pilots. Let's see it. Let's bring out the walker. So Hunter actually showed the, the technology side. but. Let me explain to you how it really works. So, <laughs> <laughs> so implant, there's almost two main components of the system. There's the implanted components and the external components. Inside my body are these electrodes that are implanted either deep into the muscle tissue or with nerves. And those, those uh, electrodes are implanted and then they're tunneled through the fatty tissue into the abdomen where I have two receivers that look like uh, that image that you have right there, but it's much like a pacemaker. So I have two of those implanted in my abdomen. And all of that is encapsulated inside the body. So how I use it is I have my external piece as well. I have a small coil, that little black coil that you see that I tape to the skin that's just over the receiver. That coil connects to the external control unit, this thing that I'm wearing around my waist. So I'll be able to put in a, a, a command into the, to the box. The box sends a high-level radio frequency to the implant. The implant decodes it, sends the messages to the electrodes, and then from that point forward, it contracts those muscles for, for a viable function. So right now, I have my backs on only. You see how much my posture is so straight. If I turn it off, I can't sit up straight. My muscles are back being paralyzed again. So here, before I stand, I actually turn on my back so that way I have a, a good posture. And when I put in a command to stand, the messages go to those electrodes and allow me to stand up out of my wheelchair independently with no, no braces. It's just my muscles that are doing that movement. So when I turn off the system, that signal stops to those electrodes, and I sit down, and my legs are back to being paralyzed just like they were before. 
How much control um, of different kinds of movements does this system give you? Well, we have a whole plethora of, of programs that are into this box. And that's the neat thing, again, that with working with the researchers, is we, <coughs> as users, went to them and said, you know, if I could have a pressure release pattern, so when I'm sitting on an airline and I have to be able to relieve the pressure in my, my, while I'm sitting, how important that is. Or I just want trunk control. I even have a pattern in here for a back massage, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> So how has this changed your life, the ability to get vertical again? Well, it's not only allowed me to stay healthy and improve my joints and to be able to combat all of those secondary medical conditions. There's the everyday functional use, like standing up to, to reach a shelf or do daily chores like folding laundry and, and doing dishes and things like that. But you're able to talk to somebody eye to eye. You're able to hug a loved one. I mean, those types of things are really important that we don't always think about when they're doing the technology. To be able to, to participate in a standing ovation or the seventh inning stretch of a baseball game, or the thrill of being able to, to compete at the Paralympic Games. And the one thing that is always near and dear to my heart is to be able to stand and walk down the aisle at our wedding. Radiant a smile.